it's much easier to talk about the making of these than it is the use of them. So we move from something that's available in antique stores or lots of museums to a painting which is a singular um, thing. Um, this one, Erastus Salisbury Fields, uh, Joseph Moore and his family, about 1839, it was done by Field, is that we can see the Hitchcock chairs in the painting. So paintings are a good iconographic source of Okay, there are these things made. They now sit in museum collections or private collections. But did anyone care? Did anyone use them? And then second, how did they use them? What kinds of rooms did they appear? Did they appear in porches as porch furniture? Did they appear as kitchen seats? Or in this case, did they appear in the parlor, the fanciest room of a house? So here we have, uh, the. interestingly enough, there's a family of four children, two adults. Everyone is in black. Uh, white and black. Um, the father and the mother uh, are sitting in these Hitchcock chairs. They're very brightly. We can see the cornucopia on Joseph's chair along with the striping uh, on the legs that peers out. So this gives you a sense of the vibrancy when these were new. They're stenciling on the uh, stand right behind the family. Uh, in that case, the stenciling is used along with the mirror that's above them. Uh, to give the imitation of mahogany, a richer wood. So stenciling can be used also as a means of imitation. So there's lots of this faux decor going on. Because again, these middling people are looking on one hand to establish a connection to sort of what was once previously luxurious goods. And so they are using, just like the portrait itself, something that used to be beyond the reach of a middling family. This is a family dressed in their best. This is a, not an ordinary experience. This is an exceptional experience. So we often need to look at uh, what are the moments in a family's life cycle when a portrait might be made. Marriage, uh, death, uh, addition to, to the family. Um, so again, these are exceptional moments, and we can sort of trace out uh, the life cycle. So this is, in some ways, like an inventory. It's an inventory of all the nice things that they've acquired. And actually, some of these objects uh, that Almira's holding in her hand, uh, that are uh, uh, some of the furniture, these two chairs, are actually passed down from the family with the portrait and exist in the same collection at the Museum of Fine Art. So we always sort of wonder about that. Are these things sort of like that the portrait is brought in uh, and gave to the family so they could look uh, fancier, uh, or actually are they their real possessions? Are they their real clothes? So here we have, I think, the jewelry that she's wearing uh, has passed along in the family collection, so we know that these adornments are theirs. Um, and then I think with students it's really fun to work from what do you see? Uh, what are the different things you see? And I think students can do a good job with that uh, to uh, what do you think they're used for? What does it mean? What did this portrait mean to the family that commissioned it? What did it mean to the family that displayed it? This thing is almost uh, six feet wide. It fills a whole wall at the Museum of Fine Arts. You wouldn't know that from this. It could easily be a miniature, you know, small. So that's something you really want to sort of make sure that's in there because something that's six feet would take a lot more time, a lot more money.